Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Lead, Sell, Grow, the Human Experience Podcast. This is going to be an amazing episode because it is the first. My guest today is Jordan Metterick. He goes by Jordo. And uh, before we hopped on, he said, you know, I'm terribly sorry. My wife is stuck in an ice storm. And my little guy, Jack, who's one years old, is very sick and he's with me. Uh, do you want to reschedule? I'm like, no, this is the Human Experience Podcast. And sometimes us entrepreneurs, we just got to handle whatever comes our way. So today I got Jordo and Jack joining yep, me and Jack here. is going to bring him good luck. Say hi, Jack. Say hi. Can hi. I get a high five, Jack? Hi. What a cutie. <laughs> awesome. Jordo, welcome to the show. So it, thank you. Just let me introduce Jordo really quick. He is the founder of Drop Funnels. It's a platform that helps you easily build a whole website, sales funnel, SEO powered blogs, courses, and more. He's an award-winning filmmaker. Wow. You've probably seen this content and we'll dive deep into this on Netflix. We've seen it on Amazon Prime, ABC, NBC, CBS. Uh, Jordo, you've done so much. You're an entrepreneur. Welcome to the show. Can't wait to learn from you today, man. Yeah. Thank you for, for having me. And I think the best way to describe it is it is the human experience when you know, really my, my entire business and, and personal life are, Hey, okay, okay. Hang on. Hang on. You can talk in a minute. They are very intertwined. And so, yeah, when, uh, I, I actually work in Tyler, run, I've run every one of my businesses for my home office. So it's been a, a pretty cool, there you go. He's gonna keep saying. but yeah, I'm really glad to be here and excited to, to dive in deeper. Yeah, absolutely. So filmmaker, what, what films or what do you have going on on Amazon and yeah, so that was it was a little bit of a, a pre entrepreneurial life in a way. I was a I I owned a video production company out of Branson, Missouri, and so I made some pretty cool advertising spots for some Fortune 100s uh, like Sony, Amazon, GE, those types of companies, and so it was a really cool opportunity to learn kind of more generic branded styles of advertising. And I also got uh, really really what happened was I. I fell in love with the process of creation, of building things that people get to go enjoy. But there's the downside in almost anything. The downside is that all these corporate structures where things get so, they're so slow and it's like everything, it's what I call, a, there's that phrase that uh, a, a camel is a horse designed by a committee. So it's like everything that we produce would come out like a camel. Um, and so from that, I realized, man, I've, I, I wish, I, I really want to have more control. So I actually launched um, a three and a half year project for a documentary. It's called Church of Felons. And it's about um, uh, in Western Wisconsin, it's one of the most addicted, uh, both from an alcohol, but also, also methamphetamine use uh, perspective, one of the most addicted counties in the United States. So I made a film about it and talks about life after addiction and tells these stories and whatnot. So um, yeah, so I got to, between all of my video production side and the, and the documentary, got to spread those pretty far. Um, and then, you know, from there, I think it, it really led to from being really restrained and not being able to build what I really wanted to build to completely going the other side. I could do whatever I wanted and do whatever I wanted. Uh, the one thing that was really amazing during that time, and it was right before I launched Drop Funnels, was that I have to market this film by myself. I just, I, I love bootstrapping. I bootstrap Drop Funnels. Every, almost every company I do, I've never taken a dime in, fun, uh, in funding. We don't even use credit. Um, wow. so, so with that, I had to learn direct response marketing. How do I get people to consume a particular product, even a product that's difficult to sell? For example, there's a lot of options as far as movies are concerned. So I had to learn direct response marketing. I had to learn how do you generate a lead? How do you get what we call in the film world, butts and seats? Meaning how do you get someone in the theater to, to actually watch your film? And so we actually had, um, during our premiere, we sold out the biggest auditorium in our area twice and no one had ever done that. Uh, actually about 15 bucks per seat up to 200, 300 dollars for VIP type packages and stuff. Um, and there's a lot of the whole thing was a we were donating towards some addiction recovery efforts. So it was a really cool process, but it 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 forced me to learn how to actually market a a, a movement or a product or or anything online and to become very successful with it. And actually that's what led as kind of the the footnote, that's what led me to realize that the tools available online to do that 
are few and far between. They're really hard to use. You have to duct tape them all together. And I thought there's got to be a better way to do it. So I, marketing fascinates me. I definitely want to talk to you about how to market stuff online because some of the things that, you know, I'll, I'll create a video, I'll spend time on it, I'll put it out there and it gets, you know, a thousand views and a couple hundred likes and great. And then I see somebody else's video that's got, you know, hundreds of thousands of views, tens of thousands of likes and comments and shares. And I'm like, I don't understand. There's, it feels like there's some kind of a wall yeah. that is very hard to penetrate. But before we get into that, let me ask you, like, how did, where did you grow up? How did you grow up? Where did this entrepreneurial spirit come from? Yeah. So my dad, uh, my dad's a pastor of uh, an assembly, uh, assemblies of God church. My mom was a teacher. So we've always kind of had that kind of uh, grassroots, very, very extremely humble beginnings. I like to say the the silver spoon that we ate from, we got from Goodwill. So it was very humble. And and I always felt like this propensity to want to be able to, to do and have more, right? Um, there's the side of human impact and ethics and the things that I learned from them. But I also, actually, I kind of had a rich dad, poor dad situation. My best friend, um, his dad created the software that like waste management companies would use to geolocate the trucks. And he built that and sold it. And it's like, you know, very, very well off. So they took me on cruises and on trips and ATV things. And they like the Christmas, but they bring me to their own Christmas. And it was just out of this world. And I realized that that was funded entirely through the virtues and tenets of entrepreneurship. So with that, I realized, man, I, I think as part of the primary core pillars in my life is human impact, making things that actually adds value, as they say, makes a difference in people's lives, changes their perspective, makes your life easier, better, faster. Um, and the other side is like, you, you have to have resources in order to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that, I, that's that's why I, I really found that I'm nearly unhirable. I don't think anyone could or would want to hire me just because I've just got that entrepreneurial flame to want to go build cool things and and launch them out in a way that that I can see that vision coming to life. That is that is very cool. All right. So forward to marketing. Why am I hitting a wall? <laughs> yeah, no, I well, I really appreciate you sharing that. Most people would not even admit that that they're hitting a wall. And that's, as they say, the first step, right? Um, there are Poor guy. There, there's quite Yeah, he's he'll be okay. We just uh, overnight he <laughs> he got hit pretty hard. Um, okay, buddy. <laughs> but he loves to sing while he's sick. That's for sure. Go play. <laughs> Um, so there's a couple of different things to kind of break down here. First of all, I think I, I'm not a fan of everything that Tony Robbins says, but one thing that he said that's very wise is that comparison is the thief of happiness. So when we're often comparing what we're doing and the results, maybe we're putting in 10 times the effort of other people who seemingly don't put in the effort and they get 10 times more than we do. And I've experienced that. I think there's a lot, um, that can kind of go behind that. Often we don't know what they actually put in or, the factions, the resources that they're actually deploying. Um, that that uh, example of that, um, that that Gangnam style, right? That dance video or what, whatever mm -hmm. it's called that came out, that was actually fueled by massive advertising spend by the Chinese government. Um, and so there was this whole backstory to that, that that was, it did go viral, but there's a reason that things go viral and it has to do with the amount of fuel you can put into that rocket to grow. So really how I like to explain things and we can break up each individual piece. This is universal across any business, all offers, period. And what most people are missing is one or two of the three. They'll have one of these three elements, but you have to have all three period or else an offer will flop. So this is really the, the primary, let, let's presume you have an offer, right? We can talk about how to have a great offer. Um, we want offers to obviously to be clear, simple, actionable, and specific to a market right? So the better offer we have, the higher it'll convert. We know that to be a fact. But as it comes down to amplification, there's three individual elements. The first is the traffic component. This means the volume of eyeballs seeing your stuff. So for example, uh, you know, I was coaching someone recently and, and uh, they, you know, they're like, hey, I really want to hit uh, 50 grand a month in total sales. And maybe they're at close to 10. I was like, so how many offers are you making each month? They're like, well, I'm making like three to five. I was like, so wait a second, you have to have a 100% success rate and sell an offer at 
crazy numbers, 10 to $30,000 in order for those numbers to work out. There's not enough traffic to fuel that to give you the opportunity volume. But instead, if you were making 100, 200, 300 offers, making $100,000 a month is inevitable. It's not, it, it's so beyond predictable that what do you mean by it's offer? virtually guaranteed. Like I'm offering, when you say offer, how is, is it the same product or service offered 300 different times or sure. 300 yeah, so different offers? Yeah, so really an offer is what you do in exchange for money. Like what is right. the primary um, what is the primary outcome that they can and will achieve by going through? So if I'm a fitness coach, I could say, Hey, I've got a 12 week, uh, fitness boot camp to help, uh, you know, brides lose 10 pounds before their wedding or whatever the niche market is. That's an offer. I could also be a fitness coach and say, I help men to get into the best shape of their life without cutting out, um, you know, craft beers. So that's an offer specifically mm -hmm. to a market and the price points that kind of go around that. Okay, so what you're saying for him to hit 50k, he needs to have 100 offers targeted to specific people for different. It could be the same service, it's just positioned differently for different eyeballs. Sure, and so you you want to think about it this way. And again, this is only in you know we we have we have traffic, funnel, and conversions. Those are the three marketing pieces that that uh, amplify an offer. So we'll get to that for sure. But on the offer side you really only have three different types of offers. You have a front end lead generation or lead magnet type of offer. That could be, it's typically low ticket. It usually means it's under a hundred bucks or it's a free offer to get people into your world and experience you. Mm -hmm. We know that the more time people can spend with you and build trust, the more likely they are to buy on the back end. So we have what we call a front end offer. And usually it's just self-liquidating if you're running ads uh, to it. You just want to break even. You want like your goal is to break even. It is not to profit. And where I see a lot of people failing and messing up is they focus on these really cheap products, but they have to sell so many of them at such an insane volume that it's near impossible for them to scale to the profit margins that they want. So yeah, front end offers are typically low ticket. You just want people to get into your world. And then you want a natural path for people to go to your core offer. A core offer would be the main the main thing you want to sell them. Consulting services, coaching some type of done for you service, um, could be a course, whatever the main thing is that you want to sell them. And I always recommend a core offer needs to be, needs to have an average client value of over $3,000. So that could be a thousand bucks a month for three months, could be 3K up front for a product at minimum, because the economics work so much better at that range for you to hit revenue goals that you actually have some numbers, you have some dry powder to deploy into ads and continually scale that. Save so your core offer your front end offer. And then what we have is a back end offer. So back end is usually continuity. It's um, it could be uh, extended services. So a really good example of this, and there's a, a great book called uh, $100 million offers by Alex. I'm reading it now. People. It's so funny. You mentioned it. It's Literally, so good it's over here. It's that, really, that really guy, good. That guy knows offers. Uh, yeah. for sure. But you know, for his, for his example, he would bring people into um, like an initial trial, some, uh, some really irresistible front end offer. After they'd go through this trial on some of the, the fitness programs that he was, he was selling, he'd bring them into a longer form kind of core offering. So like a bigger, bigger package and beyond that would be continuity. Uh, if you were an agency, you might come in and offer someone an audit and say, hey, I'm going to check into your stuff, make sure it's all good to go. Very easy to deliver, low fulfillment cost. It's fast and they get a quick win. All right. Front end leads directly into, hey, we can just take over your advertising. Here's what we would do differently our retainers five grand a month, right? That'd be the primary core offering. Um, we're going to do that, do that for at least 90 days. The goal is to turn around and turn your, your return on ad spend from two to one to four to one. We're going to do that in 90 days, or we'll keep working with you until we get there, right? So if you can deliver on that primary promise in the core, pro, in the core offer, which I usually recommend having a fixed timeline on that. So about 90 days, maybe 120 days, up to about six months, but not much beyond that. But that core offer should give you a client between 3,000 and 10,000 approximately during those 90 days. And the benefit is the beauty of the back end offer, which is, hey, we can just continue doing this over time where every single month we're just going to keep running at the same continuity. So I've brought someone in at low risk, but fast win. I've added a little bit more risk to their side and said, hey, let's, you come in, you give me X amount of money and I'm going to give you this this huge win. I'm going to help you over this period of time to solve a problem for you. 
And on the back, they're like, oh, I want way more of that. Let's just keep going where we're going. So when you when you mentioned the the concept of, hey, I put out this video, but I didn't like no one responded to it. Often it can it can it can be a couple of things. One, it could be not enough people seeing it. We need more people to see that video. Or two, it could be that they don't really know what to do. They don't have a clear call to action to get into that front end offer. Um, so why don't we even workshop it right now if you're okay with it? What's the what what would you consider your first initial primary front end offer? Okay, so I was not thinking that. Um, what I was talking about is just a video that I put out there, you know, like educational and then having people potentially download a free book on communications, but let's play with it. All right. Front end offer. And this is, you know, the hundred million dollar offer is really making me think about the way I do things, but front end offer would be download this how do you sell based on personality styles mainly disc ebook right and i mean i see behind you you've got your b2b sales book right there that could be <laughs> you can have a complete front end offer built on a free plus what's called a free plus shipping funnel giving away that book or any of your other books but the concept is around sales right mm -hmm. life mastery business mastery any one of those things could be a beautiful front end offer you could either give it the digital version away for free just to in exchange for their information, or you sell it and it's just free plus shipping. So the book is free, but they pay nine bucks or whatever for shipping okay. covers your front end cost. Um, you can have upsells throughout that, but that's a great front end offer. Books are some of the highest converting um, sales funnels of all time to the core offer because it shows such intent, right? So whether they come in directly from that and they go into your primary offer, whether it's consulting or whatever that experience happens to be. Okay. Or, but so let me tell you from an yeah. entrepreneur standpoint, why I have not done that before I've done the digital one, but when it comes to like actually sending a book, sure. I don't want to box them up, put them in. And then no, I don't even don't know do how to begin with fulfillment houses and all that stuff. Like it's, it's, there's so much logistical stuff you got to know on a front end that I'm like, screw that. Let them just go buy the book. Oh man, I'm going to change your life here. So yeah, the, probably the number one way there's several out, outfits that do this specifically, but it's, it's called drop printing. So they will, Amazon does this. They have a complete service. They'll print and ship your books for under five bucks a piece front to back and print on demand. So, um, I forget the name anywhere of it. In the... I, I think almost anywhere in the world, because they've got fulfillment centers all over the place. There's other print on demand, um, book but I think they tend to be more expensive. Amazon's really, really efficient. So your goal there, it's actually extremely simple, would be you have the book that's ready to, to go, right? To be printed and shipped. Mm -hmm. They handle everything after the order is placed. So all you do is create a checkout page or a sales page to collect that nine bucks. You might have some upsells after that. So maybe it's like, hey, grab this course, grab a one-on-one -on -one call, call with me, increase that order value. And then you can literally use Zapier to say, hey, when this order comes in, send that order over to Amazon. And you don't think all you focus on is getting most people in, Hey, come in and get my free book on B2B sales. It's going to help you to do X, Y, Z. It's totally free. You just cover shipping. That's it. And that's all of your videos. They all push to that offer. Wow. And it immediately starts a sales process for people, right? They're going to be getting the book. They might read it and then come back to you to buy more things. They might immediately go on some, some people don't even consume my front end products. They don't even open it. They just want to know that you know what you're talking about. So they'll order it and then immediately dive into a higher tier offer. Huh. Okay. Hey, and by the way, if you're listening to this and you think this is a good offer, give it a thumbs up or leave a comment saying, hey, I'd love that free book and and I'll do it. I can tell you, it'll 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 shake some things up for sure, especially if you're doing any type of top of what, what you were doing was top of funnel video marketing it was branding it's education mm -hmm. but like what's the point of doing that if if it doesn't lead people somewhere it should lead them either to another video to go claim a free offer to go do something right because the more attention that we can contain and hold the the more indoctrinated excited people get about us the more they warm up to like us i love so, that you asked that because i've never not never. I've hired some marketing coaches who have um, 
kind of given me that, you know, begin with the end in mind. When you do this video, what's the purpose? Where do you want them to go after? And for me, maybe it's like, maybe it's because it's self-limiting beliefs. Maybe it's because it's the easiest thing to do. I'll put a video out, but it's really authentic. And it's stuff that I might be struggling with or that one of my coaching clients is struggling with or that a routine that I just enjoy doing just to let people know, maybe inspire, whatever. But what happens afterwards, I think every coaching client I, ha I got initially came from those videos. Hey, I love what you're doing. I'm feeling stuck in this area. Can we hop on a call? Hey, I don't know how you're staying positive or motivated. Can we hop on a call? But I never evolved from that. Like it's still, the videos don't really have a purpose. I don't have an agenda. It's like, I'm going to put it out there. I want to inspire some people, maybe get some followers. I don't know, but it's not a good way to run a business. Well, it's a slow way to run a business. It's a slow way to run a business. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and again, what you're doing is not the wrong thing. It's not wrong to do that. It can be slower, but I'll bet you my right arm that when people come to you after having consumed that content, the sales resistance is next to zero, right? Which is tough to buy. That's really mm -hmm. expensive to buy is that level of trust. So by doing it, you've got incredible assets. You think about it like, um, think of every single video, like a single family uh, home with real estate. You might only be pocketing three or 400 bucks per month per single family home in, in overall profit, but it's an army. It's a soldier working for you in this army of assets that people find, they discover, especially if it's on YouTube, maybe Facebook, TikTok. And the more that you build, it's just like a snowball. And that's why you see these people getting 5 million views in three days when they post a video. It's because they've been doing the same thing for six years, posting, okay, posting just so much content. So you're not doing the wrong thing. I'd encourage you to continue to do it. My only, my pivot for you would be a, make sure that there's an automated path for people to go consume your front end offer period. Like that's a great first step. And it should be, you know, like it's your website, eric.com slash free book, whatever that happens to be. And it's, that's the primary URL that all of your videos point to. So you want to move a little bit from the branding and kind of more traditional style of marketing where people are just becoming aware of you, but it doesn't direct them anywhere huh. and add a direct response element to it. So okay. do the same videos, but now you're going to say at the very beginning and the very end, Hey, I'm, I'm Eric. I do this type of thing for you. I've, I've got this offer. It helps you to do achieve X, Y, Z. If you want to get this free book on exactly how I do it with some of my private clients, you can come get this book absolutely free. Go to this URL, right? That at the beginning of the end and just watch what huh. happens. What a great, great idea. Okay. What about coaches that, and I'm sure you have coaches using drop funnels, Give us some good examples of like a, a funnel for a coach, because there I'll give you something I struggle with. For example, I'm the sales, you know, grew up through the sales channels. Um, so I started training people on sales, then found yeah. some leadership stuff, started teaching leadership, then communications, started teaching communications. When I coach an entrepreneur, most of the times it goes from, you know, they say, hey, I want you to help me grow my sales revenues. And then we find out that he's not having a good relationship with his spouse. So then it becomes life coaching because if home life isn't great, business life isn't going to be great. Mm -hmm. And so I have all these different types of people and, and I'm able to help them in so many different types of ways. I have a tough time creating a specific offer for a specific person. And I'm sure mm -hmm. I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, off offers, that's, it's, it's definitely a, a vast, a vast conversation, but I'd, I'd say just to nail that down, are you saying that you don't currently have an offer that could fit a multitude of different buyers? And right now you're just doing it kind of piecemeal. I think I have an offer that can fit a multitude of different buyers, but my, like even reading Alex's book, right. He'll take that same offer, but he's going to direct it to a specific type of person. Right. So with that, it's one offer. In fact, I tell people who are under 50K a month generally, I mean, this is a, it's kind of an obtuse statement to make, but people under 50K usually, and definitely under 10K, you only need one offer, one funnel and one traffic source, period. If you have 
more than one of any of those things, you are cutting yourself off at the knees because it's so hard to optimize around multiple things at the same time. It's like trying three different diets at the same time. It doesn't make sense. They're all going to conflict. Mm -hmm. So with an offer, I'd highly recommend you have one offer, but when you sell it, you make it fit their exact situation, right? So let's say that you had a video course of 10 modules showing people how to get better at sales. You know, maybe there's a component in there that talks about, you know, buyer objections, but you're talking to someone, they're like, no, I'm great at objections. I don't have any issues. Well, I'm not going to sell the objections component of the offer because that's not a pain point for them. I want yeah. to, I, I want to have the offer encapsulating the, the broad range of these types of people who want it. But when I sell it, it's like, okay, based on what you're talking about, this is going to be the best path for you. And it's kind of a diagnostic based sale as you're familiar. So that's, that's probably the, the very fastest way to amplify your book for sure. I, I could virtually guarantee, I haven't read your book yet, but I'd love to, I could virtually guarantee that that book is your front end offer. Your core offer needs to be a three to five K that can be one to many. It's not a one-to-one -one offer. Um, it's a process of about 90 days to achieve a specific result. And when it's sold, it's sold based on their pain points, not necessarily just the content that's in there. Cause it might not apply. You repeat back to them exactly the problems they have and say, this is this portion of the offer is going to solve this. This portion is going to solve this. And you're ready to go at that point, their objections have been answered and it's just a matter of, okay, how do I get in? Yeah, that's a, those are really, really good ideas. What's, what's one of the bigger aha moments you've had in the last like six months where you're like, Oh shoot, I've been doing this wrong. Oh boy. Yeah. A couple things. And I like to say, and I believe it. So it's not, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not self-destruction um, by, you know, without being on purpose, but um, there's a couple of things I like to say that I, I generally fail more, more than most people. I fail all the time. Every day I feel I've probably failed three times this morning because I just try so many things and figure it out. And you only need one out of 10 things to work to, for it to, to, to kick. So I've got lots of lessons on that side. Um, one thing I'd say is one of the biggest aha moments is how critical it is to stay stop up, to stay top of mind with your leads and your current customers. This means staying in their inbox with consistent emails personal reach outs through SMS or phone calls, building a deeper relationship with people where you're not just asking, Hey, what do you want to buy from me? It's, Hey, how are your kids? Hey, I heard Jack was sick. How's he feeling? Just who asks those questions? That's not business people. It's friends. It's family. It's people who truly care about you. Mm -hmm. My buddy, uh, George Bryant talks about that uh, relationships beat algorithms. So while we're all trying to kind of hack the best way to like op increase our open rates in this, I love his his model of, uh, of of teaching that it's very much about the relationship. So, in in order to generally increase the growth of the brand, the number one mover is whether or not we form a relationship with someone very quickly. Absolutely, and then we keep that relationship moving. It sounds like a lot of work. A lot of it can be automated through an autoresponder, where you're emailing them every day, every other day. But if you're not at least emailing your list once a week, you're leaving money on the table. Period. And you're not serving people. You're not making. Are you always on asking? Them. Are you always offering something in your emails, or are you pointing them to that free offer, or what are you doing? Yeah, so I think it's unique, unique to each person. Gary V calls it the jab, 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 right hook, right? Mm -hmm. So three pieces of content that are non-offer based. Maybe in the PS line, it'll say, "Oh, by the way, it's very, very lean back." Hey, if you're interested in this, we've got a special going on here. It ends on Friday. Just throwing that into some emails. But then a direct response, you should go buy this offer. Here's exactly how it works. Here's how valuable it is. Doing that every fourth email. We actually do it more often than that. Probably it's kind of backwards. We we pretty much do three offers than a value post on the other side. Um, but again, we're primarily selling software and you know, we have some done for you service. We'll build sales funnels for people and, and whatnot too. Um, so for most people, I'd say. If you're a, if you're hesitant towards feeling like I'm just going to be too salesy in my in my marketing, in my autoresponder, et cetera, pull yourself back a bit and just say, no, my goal is not to sell more stuff. My goal is to build deeper relationships. How would I do that? I would pour out into them lessons, um, different strategies that are working, what's working now, maybe new 
a video that you saw that really changed your perspective on things. Hey, go check out this video. This was powerful for me. Respond back to me and let me know if this was helpful to you. It's there's no, there's no, uh, it could be to one of your own videos. I just shot this video that shows you how to break down the top five objections that most uh, XYZ people have. Um, and you can be a direct response without selling, right? Direct response just means I'm calling you to do something. So if I were to send you a link and say, hey, Eric, hey, I just shot this video on how to build a sales funnel, a free plus shipping book funnel. Let me know if this, just respond back and let me know if this helps you. That's direct response. And it's getting us to work more deeply, whether you bought or something or not is almost irrelevant because I'm, I'm over pouring into your bucket and eventually that spills over. Man, that is so timely right now. Cause I'm just thinking through this stuff. I, what have you noticed that gets more reads? Like what types of, what types of messages? Like if I'm stuck, if I'm like, I'm not really sure exactly what to send to them. Are there things that people respond to better than others? Topics yeah, I, I think, especially with email and SMS based marketing, I think brevity is king. There's this great story of a copywriter who was hired on to, to write this, this sales letter, this really important sales letter for a big marketing campaign. And they said, Hey, we can't give you four weeks to do this. You need to get it done in two. And so he delivered it. And it was this like 50 page long sales letter. They're like, this is way too long. This doesn't like, why is this long? He's like, if I had more time, I would have written less. So the, the key to, especially in a very flash pan attentive type of market that we're in right now, where people are scrolling every second through a video mm -hmm. standing out is going to be key. And, and we're very much seeing a move towards shorter form content. Um, longer form is actually going to become the gold nugget because so many people are doing short form that can't do long form. So there's going to be a, a flip of the tides, but right now short form is very hot, whether that's video based content quickly consumable, um, or even your email content thinking, how do I write? If I could only write three sentences to someone right now that could either inspire them, motivate them, get them to take action on something. What would I write in three sentences? Cause if you can do that, you're going to be filling up their bucket more than giving them a chore to mm. go, Hey, read this, these 50 pages. Yeah, no, the, that, those are really, really good ideas, Jordo. So what, what's a good app or what do you use for SMS? marketing. Yeah. So while we, we have inside of drop funnels, we have SMS conversational SMS built in really to our pipeline. So, so that means can, it'll send them text messages. Correct. Yeah. So text messages and emails. And so you mm -hmm. can see however you choose to respond to them. So say you've got your book. If I were building you a funnel, I would say absolutely name, email, phone number, address, where to send it that gets zapped over for auto fulfillment that lead gets brought into a sales pipeline that automatically texts them and says, Hey, so excited that you got my book. It's on the way to you, but Hey, I wanted to surprise you and give you a digital version of this for free so that you can start consuming it now before it gets to your door. Let me know if you'd like that link, they respond back to you. And now you've got a conversation moving and then you respond back with, okay, great. Here's the digital link. What, what else is going on in your sales process that you're struggling with or what, 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 the, let me know what's going on. I've got some other resources I could send your way. And so you've got, kind of a, a conversation. We don't do mass SMS marketing. We've just never felt, I'm very much about the relationship side. So how do we communicate with people one-to-one? -one? I like that. So um, one, talk to me about drop funnels. Like who was it? How did you get the idea? Who'd you have in mind when you created the software and who has the best kind of outcomes when they use it? Great question. So I built it really when I was promoting the film and I was trying to get butts and seats and I spent probably four months, five months building sales funnels to get tickets sold, trying to figure out how to get merch created and do all these things. And how do I sell it? How do I fulfill it? And the same questions that, that you're asking. Right. And I was using old school WordPress. I added click funnels on top. You know, I had a separate business with course I was adding Kajabi and then adding this thing and it was duct tape overwhelm. It's like, I have to have all these tools and I hope cross my fingers that a weak link doesn't break. Um, so for me, but with that and also some ethical issues that I saw going on in some of these platforms, I was like, I don't want to have anything to do with that. I want to have one place to build my business, do it in an ethical manner, help change people's lives. Um, 
And so I was solving my own problem, really, which was how do I build on a WordPress based infrastructure so I could get free organic traffic, get ranked, but also have sales funnels that can load very quickly, digital courses, sales pipelines, blogs, et cetera. So it tends to be people who are in the consulting, coaching, high ticket services space, maybe have a digital mm -hmm. course, but it's usually people selling their expertise. So uh, a lawyer, um, even, even like dentists and chiropractors could use it as well, but it tends to be people who are looking to use direct response marketing with sales funnels. Um, but whether they're selling a front end offer or, you know, a, a core offer through a, a booked call or, or something like that. Um, it varies for a lot of people, but typically people are selling their own expertise, their guidance or a service. And what does it cost for someone? So like I had a, a marketing company that's building out a website and not very happy with some of the things they're doing. I have <laughs> Kajabi, I know the pain. <laughs> right? Kajabi for my uh, emails and I've had some funnels through there. And when I go and present to any corporation, by the way, this is a great tip for anybody that's presenting and wants to build an email list. The last slide is always a QR code that says, connect with me or download a free whatever. And they just take their picture and I get their information of whoever's in the room. Um, that goes into Kajabi. What else do I have? I got Acuity Scheduler. I got... I don't know. It's like you said, a bunch of different pieces. If I need a landing page, I think I go to Kajabi emails, Kajabi. Um, so and by the way, the some of these, I don't hate on any of these other platforms for the most they're part. Great. Like they're, they can all be great tools. Kajabi just tends to kind of be a little bit boxy. Like you don't really have control to build exactly what you want and it loads right. a little bit slow. So it affects conversion, but I mean, they're a huge global brand and they're doing some big things. I've had my, um, I initially I built my whole website on Kajabi and then I changed it. Um, anyway, but so I got all these pieces and they're costing a few hundred here, hundred, you know, like it, there's a cost associated with it. So to build it out on, on drop funnels, like what is it? What's, what's an average cost if we wanted to use kind of all the services that it offers. Yeah. It's, it's under a hundred bucks, 97 a month. So for everything, um, for everything. Yeah. So I've, I've always been very much of the side that um, we don't want to be the cheapest. We definitely don't, but we want to be the best for most people. Um, so we actually have a $49 plan right now. We're probably going to get rid of that because frankly, it, it, I'd, I'd rather just have one primary plan where it has all features unlocked and not, not lock anything. Everything's unlocked, period. So on the starter plan, the 97, um, you've got unlimited sales funnels, unlimited website pages, uh, your blog, digital courses. So you you would effectively eliminate your your current or new website, your Kajabi infrastructure, ClickFunnels or any other sales funnel platform, um, and any essentially one-to-one -one communication tools with uh, leads and prospects through a pipeline. But like the a, site is, so my site is built in, built in WordPress somewhere. So how would that, I don't want to completely get rid of it. Yeah, so we we actually are WordPress, right? So we, right. we have that that benefit of being on the same infrastructure um, and we host all the sites and everything's done. There's no tech involved at all. Um, so we do have some some people who can help kind of migrate some stuff for people if they're looking to move mm. a site over, for example. Um, it really, I, I think one of the bigger things that it comes down to is only focus on solving the problem that means most to you. It's almost like have a have a problem snowball. What's the biggest problem? It's like, well, my website's fine. It, it can just exist. I don't really need to focus on that as the primary problem. I need to get more leads and sales. Okay, so first start on the sales funnels area, get some momentum with that. And then if you want to port over your website and domain as well, you can do that. And you guys host, so drop funnels can host um, all the email addresses. So again, we don't, we don't do, you can either add an autoresponder like active campaign, a Weber MailChimp to any of your opt-in or checkout pages so that you can mm. mass auto autoresponder within our sales pipelines. It's built on a one-to-one -one conversation. So you can automate those, those, those messages that go out, but it happens on a one-to-one -one basis. So if they respond, you're going to see their, their response directly um, inside of pipelines, but you can always add an autoresponder on top to send, you know, 
a million emails in a day if you wanted to. And that's pretty easy to do. Very easy. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Native integrations. Jordo, sounds like it's a really cool product. I'm going to check it out. Um, what did I not ask you that you wish I would? You know, this has actually been a ton of fun. I could talk about this stuff all day. Um, I, I guess tell. maybe just to close the loop a little bit, because we talked about offers. I want to just kind of close the loop on those three other elements in 10 seconds or, or so here. Um, you know, we have, we have traffic, we have sales funnel and we have conversion. So you asked me about what's the very best sales funnel for someone to build um, who has a high ticket offering. My best and highest recommendation is have a lead magnet or a front end offer that immediately leads. And that could be free. It could be like, Hey, grab this free training. Could be grab this book, whatever it happens to be, just get some, they call it bait, something to kind of magnetize people in and get them excited. It helps them raise their hand and say, yes, I'm interested in this particular topic. It moves on to a VSL page or a video sales letter video from you saying, this is what we do. Here's some additional things you're going to learn from the book. If you want to jump on a private call with me to see if we can help you at a deeper level, click down below. You have a little call booking calendar that then leads them to the third part of the marketing trifecta, which is conversion. Get them on a call, diagnose the problems and, and prescribe your solution to the answer to those particular problems if they're a good fit for you. So between those things, traffic, your funnel and conversion, those three elements, and, and remember only having one offer, only one traffic source uh, and uh, yeah, and one infrastructure. So one sales funnel, right? Only focus on one, especially if you don't have one yet, just get one up and running and, and optimize around one thing. Your life's gonna be better and you're not gonna make more money with more. That's the big lie in the space is, Having more sales funnels means you're going to make more money. It's not the case. It's the complete opposite. The fewer variables for you to optimize around your life. Imagine being married to 30 women at the same time and oh, hoping man. that they're all going to be healthy relationships. It's not going to work. Same thing with sales funnels. So I always say less is more. That's Andrew Tate style right there. That's not, that's not for me. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know how he does it, uh, but he, he can have it. <laughs> He's so funny, man. I saw him on some interview and he's like, um, the, the guy said, so how many kids do you have? And he's like, yes. The guy said two. He's like, what do you think? I'm a little B. Yeah. yeah five. Think what do you think? So I'm a little B. It's like 10 uh, closer. I'm like, man. He's like, so how do you feel about being with one woman? He's like, they cook babies way too slow. <laughs> so, yeah, he's like, if you can do it in two that? weeks, <laughs> maybe I'd have more kids. It's like, who? Who are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he, yeah, that guy. Some things he says are good. Some other things you're like, well, he's a nut. Um, Jordo, thank you so much. How can people find you, or are there any special offers that they can take advantage of for this holiday season? Sure. So uh, you can go to dropfunnels.com if you're interested in kind of building it yourself. You can grab yourself a free trial and dive in. I would say only do that if you know what you're doing and looking to solve for. Right. If you know how to build a sales funnel. Drop funnels is going to be, or a website or a blog. If you know how to do those types of things and you have a goal, um, dive in and make it happen. You're going to fall in love. Um, and we have five-star support. I, it's one of our most powerful aspects and why most people stay is our support is phenomenal. We have a private Slack workspace where people can message me personally and get answers. And I'm the founder of the company. I just make myself very accessible. Um, but for those who are busy, I recommend just getting in touch with our team. Um, and then just let us build, build something for you. It's going to be worth, we, we charge a fraction of what almost anyone else does. We try to keep things very uh, cost efficient, um, but it's better than you trying to figure things out and going through the learning curve, right? It's better to just get something up and running as soon as possible. Yeah. So if, what type of a price budget us. are you talking about in a time commitment from your actual client? Because I'm sure we'd have to have an interview for me to say, you know, here's what I'm looking for. Here's what this is about. Yeah. So we, it really varies. It's very custom. We, we, the only kind of boxed offer, so to speak that we have is right around that 3k mark. It's, it's actually, if you buy an annual version, we just did this for black Friday. If you buy an annual version of our, of our highest tier plan, which is 3k or so you get a private consulting call with me, um, a, a, a sales funnel built that's built on some of our proven templates um, and you get access to drop responder, which is a, a CRM that goes into your Gmail and turns your Gmail into a full C CRM and autoresponder, which is pretty cool. So we'll probably bring that offer back shortly, depending on when people hear this, that might become a permanent offer because it was uh, quite successful. 
Um, but for fully customized offers, I love to jump on those calls personally and find out what are you looking to do? How do we make sure that the economics work out best for you? Um, and give kind of a, a unique option for people just to make sure it makes sense. But my, my general rule of, of thumb is I, I have to ensure for me to sleep well at night that someone gets a minimum of 10 times the value for any dollar they spend with us. So I either want 10 times in actual revenue driven by the work that we do, or in at least time back, energy back, stress eliminated, 10 times the value of any 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 uh, amount of money that people invest with us. And I talk to a lot of people. I think you come off as very, very genuine. And I do believe that your clients are getting, when they deal with your company, it's you guys are keeping their best interests in mind. So super appreciated, Jordo. Where, um, where's most of your team based? Are they US based? Are they all over the world? All remote. Yep. Yeah. Um, UK, Malaysia, uh, Seattle. Um, there's actually just a couple of us in the, in the US, but the rest are all over the world. And they're your employees? Yeah. So, I mean, they've been, I've had someone on since before Drop Funnels even existed before, I think before I even had the URL, he was just working uh, on some projects with me. So there's about uh, 15 of us total and uh, great culture. And, you know, we, we really care as you can tell now, Jack is sleeping in my arms <laughs> that we have like a, a good work-life balance. Awesome. Well, I hope Jack feels better. Thanks for bringing him on. Thank you. And uh, super appreciate you being here, my friend. Thank you. Good luck. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye.